So in today's video, I'm going to teach you how to use Ruby methods as first class functions. Now, if you have a pretty good understanding of Ruby, this idea might sound a little bit odd to you because Ruby methods are not really first class functions, but there actually is a way to get around this. And I'm also going to briefly describe the difference between procs and blocks and how to use the ampersand operator in the context of blocks. So to get into this, uh, let's talk a little bit about the Ruby map method. So map is one of those really useful functions that carries over from functional programming languages like Lisp, and it allows us to um, execute arbitrary code for each element within an array. And then it returns a new array containing the results of those function calls. So let's say, for example, we have um, an array of integers, and then we want to convert those integers into strings. What we can do is call map, and then we pass it a block, which is just an anonymous function. And then for each element that's yielded, we're calling 2s. All right, cool. So what you'll see people do oftentimes in this case is they'll use the shorthand notation. So rather than writing out the whole block, they'll use a syntax that looks like this. And it does the exact same thing. Now some people get a little bit tripped up by this. They think that it's some sort of uh, syntactic sugar or some sort of Ruby magic um, and it only applies in this one case. Um, but this is actually very predictable behavior once you get to understand uh, or once you understand what the ampersand operator does. So what the ampersand operator does is it calls to proc on the object next to it and then it converts that proc into a block and uses that block in the method call. So the difference between procs and blocks is really simple. Procs are true first class functions that you can assign to variables, you can pass them around, um, they're just like any other object in Ruby. Whereas blocks are not objects, they're just these transient things that only exist in the context of method calls. So that's the difference between procs and blocks. So like I said before, the ampersand operator calls to proc on this symbol. Now, what could that be doing? To proc on a symbol, that seems kind of odd. To demonstrate what this is doing, I'm going to write out a method that converts a symbol to a proc. So let's call it sim to proc. It's going to take a symbol. So all it does is it creates uh, a new proc. It returns a new proc that takes one argument, and then it sends that symbol as a method name um, on that object. So it uses the symbol as a method call. And that's all it does. So just to demonstrate this, uh, let's do 2s, and then we'll call 3. And that returns the string 3. So if we do this, that does the exact same thing. All right, so cool. Now that we understand that, um, let me just drive this point home even more and demonstrate that the ampersand operator can be used with anything that you can call to proc on. So uh, let's put in a lambda here, for example. So instead of writing out a block, we're going to do a lambda, which takes n, and then it calls 2s on n. All right, so the reason why we can't just pass in a lambda or a proc directly is because they are true objects. And if we are just to uh, pass in a lambda like this, or let's say uh, pass in a new proc like this, that doesn't work because Ruby is going to interpret that as an argument. And map does not take any arguments, it only takes a block. So that's why we have to use the ampersand operator. All right, so that shorthand notation that we were looking at before, that works really well if you just want to call one method on each object that's yielded. But what if you want to do something a little bit different? What if you want to do the flip of that, where instead of calling a method on the object, you want to use that object as an argument in another methods? Um, uh, or use that object as an argument for another method. So a common case for this is when we want to convert um, 
an array of date strings to date objects. Okay, so we've got our date strings. And we can convert those to date objects by using map. And we're going to create this block. Just takes in the, uh, the date string and then uses it as an argument in the date parse method. And that returns an array of date objects like we would expect. Now, this is a little bit silly what we're doing. And uh, to explain why this is silly, I'm going to switch over to another language that does support uh, first class functions as methods, and that's JavaScript. So let's, uh, let's do the same thing we were doing in Ruby, but do it in JavaScript instead. So we're going to call map. We've got this anonymous function. And we're going to call date parse on each object that's yielded. OK, so that returns what we would expect. But since, uh, since JavaScript supports uh, methods as first class functions, this is a little bit silly. Because we're constructing this anonymous function. And all it's doing is it's just taking the argument and then passing it as is to the date parse function. Why do we even need this anonymous function in the first place? Let's just cut that out. OK, now you'll see that that does the exact same thing. And we didn't need to use an anonymous function. That's pretty cool. The reason why this works is because date parse, when you call it without any arguments, returns the underlying function. Now, if you were to call it with the parentheses, it would treat this as uh, a function call. But without, it re just returns the underlying function. OK, so let's try doing this in Ruby. Instead of using this block, we're going to use that shorthand notation. Let's see if that works. And that does not work. The reason why this doesn't work is because Ruby is flexible in the way that you can call a method. So you can call a method with parentheses or without parentheses. It has the exact same meaning. So that means when we call date parse without any parentheses, this is just a method call. So unlike JavaScript, it doesn't return the underlying function. It calls the method. All right, so is there any way to get around this? Well, there actually is. The object superclass, which all objects inherit from, has a method called method. And what this does is it returns a method object, or it returns an object that represents what that method is. And we can also call to proc on this method object. So now we can use this method as an anonymous function. So let's go back to our data array. All right, so now that we know that we can um, we can use this method object and it responds to to proc, how can we use the shorthand notation with date parse? Well, all we have to do is use the method method pass in parse as a symbol. And then you'll see that we can now use this method as a first class function. So I wouldn't really recommend using this in production. Um, I think it's very rarely used. I've personally never seen it in anybody else's code. So it might trip some people up if you're working on a team. Um, but it's just kind of a cool thing to know how to use, and it just shows the, the flexibility and power of Ruby. So I hope this was useful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me a, a personal message. And uh, thanks for watching.